Hello, I'm Elena Davlikanova, a Democracy Fellow with the Center for European Policy Analysis. And welcome to Understanding Ukraine, a series of conversations with Ukrainian politicians, decision makers, and experts on a variety of topics to better understand Ukraine, the future of the Ukrainian people, the current war uh, against Russian Federation, and uh, Ukraine's uh, cooperation with partners and allies. And today it is my honor to have this conversation with Artur Gerasimov, um, Ukrainian MP from the uh, European Solidarity Party, a deputy head of the Ukrainian delegation to OEC and the member of the Viral of the Assembly. Uh, thank you very much for joining us today. Hello. Um, my first question would be about uh, OEC, uh, which remains the world's largest uh, regional security organization by the number of states, uh, and also a very good uh, platform for the dialogue. However, there have been discussions about Russia's membership in this organization after its full-scale invasion in Ukraine. So, uh, in your opinion, uh, should Russia be suspended or sanctioned otherwise? Um. Very good question about OEC and OEC Parliamental Assembly because um, I am not dividing all these bodies because for me it's like a big one organization. Uh, let's be um, open and uh, let's say through. Uh, OEC now in crisis, in big crisis. Uh, in the previous years, so you did a great job in Ukraine through special monitoring mission. Yes, it's really helped us. But now the crisis uh, created by one country and by one member OEC, Russia. And uh, truly speaking, this is not about OECE and OECEPA. This is about almost all international organization right now. But we need to remember one very important thing. Crisis, it's not only the problem, it's also the possibility. And that's the way I want to see the situation, for example, for OEC in particular. Because I don't want to see OSCE um, destiny as a League of Nations destiny. You remember what happened with League of Nations before the Second World War. And because of that, because of that, I strongly believe that creation of so-called penalty box for delegation from countries who started invasion, who started aggression, who uh, started war against the territorial integrity and sovereignty of, one, of other members, this penalty box must be created. And uh, you're totally right. This process now actively, actively done in the parliamental assembly. I believe that assembly in this case will be the leader in this process. And in case we finalize it in the assembly, it later on will be created also in the main ministerial OSCE. And uh, briefly, I can tell about it as follows. There is a, not only the plan to suspend Russia, I believe it must be suspended, and not only Russia, but it's under discussion right now. But we have big plan of Ukrainian delegation, which was distributed uh, among all other members, more than 50 countries are participating in the organization. And this plan includes, first of all, the change to the rules of the assembly with purpose to create suspension. And what is can be interested for our viewers? In the beginning, it was very strict. From the every beginning, full suspension of all rights of the delegation. But you are totally right, this organization about dialogue, even with, uh, let's say, not good states. That's why at the moment this amendment became uh, modified and now uh, it proposed the two stages suspension. On the first stage, it will be suspension of the rights to vote, rights to uh, uh, be elected, rights to uh, speak during the assemblies, but the delegation of the country will have possibility to visit and to speak, let's say in the couloirs. Uh, but if nothing changed, Next stage is full suspension of all rights. And uh, also it can be interesting to you, but uh, why it was modified? Because in the beginning, quite big European countries, uh, like for example, Finland, uh, Austria, Cyprus as well, were against 
were against and uh, what Ukrainian delegation did, we met carefully with all these delegations, we carefully listened for them and improved all that stuff. Uh, and our plan also includes to create the supplementary item, let's say the resolution of the assembly with immediate effect. Why? Because uh, the change to the rules, then change to the rules, will be active in case it will be uh, supported only in one year, the fastest. But we need immediate effect. We don't want to see this country in the room even this year. That's why this, the number two in the plan to create special resolution with immediate effect that Russians can't be present, can't participate in the OSCE event. Also, it's creation of a special committee within the OSCE uh, for supporting Ukraine against Russian invasion, against Russian aggression. So, and we strongly believe in Vancouver because the annual session of assembly will be in Vancouver our plan will be supported. We are hardly working on that. And to finalize it, to make it a resume, mm, yes, almost all international organizations are in the big troubles. See what, what, what is happening with UN. See, when invaders, invaders, the aggressor country is chairing the organization. It's, 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 for me, it's unacceptable. And uh, because I'm in the delegation of OEC, I will do what, whatever I can with purpose to save this organization, but to save it on the right way, but not like many propose to forget about Russia and allow them to be present, you know, and without any restrictions. I hope very much that you will succeed with this goal. Uh, and my next question would be about uh, Europe, because it is believed that uh, Russia's aggression plans were not limited to Ukraine alone, and several other European countries could have become its victims as well. Uh, so is Europe currently doing enough to protect itself by helping Ukraine? Uh, you're totally right that uh, Ukraine... Uh, is not the first part of the chain, but not the last part of the chain. Because see, uh, chain started in much earlier. Chechnya, no prompt reply from the democratic world. Transnistria, no prompt reply from the democratic world. Uh, Georgia, no prompt reply from the democratic world. And after Russia decided, okay, we can, and uh, Europe is closing their eyes and don't see for our actions. And they invaded Ukraine in 2014. Even after that, was not, from my point of view, prompt reply from the, let's say, democratic world. That's why we received, one of the reasons why we received the full-scale invasion in 2022. But uh, when we are speaking about the Europe, Europe is united, that's the great, but it's different because, for example, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Estonia, they understand very clear who will be the next. They, are very, they understand that they are also in very big danger. I am really thankful for NATO, and I am really proud that now Finland is a member of NATO, and Sweden, I strongly believe, soon will become the member of NATO because it's also helping to save situation for Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania as well, because we need to strategically to evaluate every step, but not only from the purpose uh, of interest of one country, but which kind of problem, because you were told, is doing enough or not? Europe is doing good, but not enough. And you know, the key point now, the key point is the speed of decision making. Because now the question not about what Europe is doing, the question is how fast Europe is doing, because uh, we need to understand the help which uh, we are receiving now, much more important, much more effective than help we will receive, let's say in one year, one year and a half or two years. And the second point from my point of view, why not enough, half steps. Half steps, because see, uh, not only because of uh, behavior of Europe, but also because of influence of Russia inside Europe. In many areas, we see half steps, but half steps also extremely dangerous. Because, okay, we see situation in oil and gas now, yeah? 
But in oil, still we see how Russia, through third countries, is delivering oil to Europe. It's unacceptable. And I don't believe that Europe, with all their analytical services, analytical, uh, let's say, uh, departments, can't see it. Next point, a lot of people just, you know, keep in silence on that, but it's extremely dangerous. It's situation in the nuclear industry, because please see what percentage of delivery of enriched uranium from Russia is in the European markets. If I'm not mistaken, in some cases it's up to 70%. But we need to remember that any energy area, any economical area, any, let's say, delivery area, Russia, always will use as a uh, political, economical, and uh, military push or military, you know, uh, pressure, pressure, pressure on the country. We brilliantly saw it in situation in Ukraine when they use gas and oil, as you know, as a pressure issue. We saw it in Europe. Why now we are keeping silence about nuclear energy situation? We must be very careful with that. And also, why not enough? Because still, I believe that number of Russian agents of influence in Europe is very, very high. And uh, in case Europe will not do something with that, um, it will be big problems for countries in Europe. And uh, also, you know, uh, one more point about that stuff. We, because of the situation in Ukraine, of course, we are doing a lot of meetings with our European partners. And some of them are telling, guys, we want to deliver weapons to you, a lot of things to you, ammunition to you, but we don't have enough, I mean, in their stocks. But the formula, formula to these people is very, very simple. More help in ammunition and defense, uh, the, you know, in weapons to Ukraine right now, less Russian weapons against European countries, because what Ukraine is doing now by these weapons from our partners and by ammunition from our partners, we are destroying offensive capacity, capacities of Russia. And, and also, when we are speaking about that, you know, the downing of Kinjal missile was very, very important for understanding that, please, don't afraid of Russia at all. And uh, the last but not least, I strongly believe that uh, Europe also must do concrete steps uh, against Russian state ideology, racism. And uh, because what I see in Europe, many people are telling there is Kremlin, there is Putin, but there are Russian people. I am now keeping in my hand the Russian of uh, the results of the Russian sociological services. And I see that 70, 75% of population is totally supporting this war, it's supporting Putin and his actions against Ukraine. Uh, also, we listen to many interception of conversations between uh, Russian soldiers and their families. When families inspiring their sons and uh, brothers and husbands to kill Ukrainians. That's, you know, this is not normal. And the last but not least, all world saw the crimes of Russian army in Bucha, Irpin, Borodyanka, in Izum, in other cities, you know, in any liberated city we are, found, we are finding the mass graves. But it was done not by Kremlin. It was done by soldiers. It was done by Russian citizens. And it was done not in one place. It was done in all places which were occupied by Russia. That's why I would like to ask you how to ensure sustainable, long-lasting peace on the European continent. What is the role of Ukraine in this new security order? And how do you see the future of Ukraine in general? Um, you know, uh, 
to ensure the peace in the region in the long term perspective, it's extremely important. But to do that, our European partners, our let's say democratic world partners, must understand very important principle, which is truly speaking, they don't understand right now. And uh, Russia is also doing a lot of its purpose to put opposite thoughts to their minds. What is the principle? Half stop of the war right now will be just a stage, not the finish. Because if the war will be stopped with some, let's say, deliveries to Russia, if Russia and Putin will feel themselves so much successful, it means that it's only a question of time when they will start it again. That's why if we want to ensure it, I, I want to say for, to our European partners, don't be afraid now. Don't be afraid now. Do as much as possible, because if you will be afraid to fight today, Tomorrow will be too late. And just let's, you know, study and remember lessons of the Second World War. It's a lot of similarities. And also, we need to understand why it's very dangerous. The world now is very, very small. It's much smaller than it was even during the Second World War because of the new weapons, because of the new uh, connections, because of internet, because of the, our technologies. That's why, because of the space, military technology, et cetera, et cetera. And it means that war in Ukraine, in case it will not be finished, and I want to say you how, can be a big trigger for the, let's say, much bigger cooperations, offense, and conflict. But how to stop it now? Not afraid Putin, don't afraid Putin. And to defeat Russia by foreign principles, borders of Ukraine, 1991. Don't afraid, because Russia is trying to tell, we will use these, these, these nuclear weapons, etc., etc. But again, remember, Kinjal was down. Next point, install the tribunal and to show for all authoritarian regimes around the world what will be with their leadership. Next point, of course, new government in Russia, but not only new government. New government in Russia will not change the situation drastically. The world will uh, be obliged to do denazification, the Russianization of Russia, because Russianism is their state ideology, and demilitarization of Russia. And the last but not least, and I think the most important, Ukraine must be the member of NATO. Don't afraid Putin. Ukraine must be the member of NATO. Only in this case, uh, safe, safety and uh, long-term peace in Europe will be installed. And uh, what will be our contribution? I strongly believe, and not only me, all people who communicate with Ukrainian soldiers, they are telling that Ukrainian army is now the strongest on the continent, the strongest because of experience, because of tactic, because of bravery. Because see, we are using weapons from our partners, but when they are telling that our soldiers need six, eight, 12 months to study these weapons, we are studying them in one month, in two months. So it means how educated, how ready, how bravery, and how motivated for this are our soldiers. And, uh, also, you, why only the full victory will uh, restore, will restore the world security architecture for the next 70 years? I think not only we, all European countries, all, let's say, world countries want to see that. That next 70 years will be again, you know, full peace uh, and no big conflicts. Why? Because now in what is under decision in Ukraine. Ukraine will be bright example, bright successful example, what will be with aggressor, 
for Ukraine will be unsuccessful example that any aggressor can get any territory. And about future, of course, bright. I see it very bright. I, I strongly believe that Ukraine has a bright future because our people, our soldiers deserved it. And, but here are also two scenarios. In case Ukraine will be a democratic country, it will be much faster. In case Ukraine will not be democratic, and we see some signs, some examples of that, we, again, will be very successful. We will, the future will be bright, but unfortunately, much more slow and uh, through big obstacles. I'm very grateful for this very informative discussion. I truly hope that your messages that are very obvious to every Ukrainian will be heard and right decisions will be made and the future of Ukraine will be bright. Thank you very much for your time. And thank you very much for watching this episode of Understanding Ukraine. If you are interested in our work, please visit cepa.org.